Let's hear it for Nate. Come on. Come on. Nah, it's okay. Forced applause is just as good. All right, so I'm going to tell a couple stories of things that legitimately happened to me. If you laugh, plus one. If you don't, uh, plus one. Math wasn't my strong suit in high school, so I uh, I lived with a guy in Florida for a while. I lived with him in Florida, and I was in his front room. Uh, so the way the house was arranged was I was in the front half of the house. Him and his family were in the back half of the house, and we lived together pretty well. It was a pretty good living situation. And next door, he owned a honeymoon house, which is just a little place, like a uh, one bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, real simple setup. So he told me that if I was able to find someone that would want to move into that place, I would get a month free rent, which is good. I mean, I'm a poor guy. A month free rent is like, I don't know, a couple of McDonald's. So I agreed to it. I'm like, okay, I post on Facebook, hey, anyone out there looking for a place to live? Some girl who I have never met in my life, have no idea how she was able to comment or message me, messages and says, hey, there's a place for rent. Do you mind if I apply to be there? I'm like, yeah, sure. Let me talk to the landowner, see if he's okay with it. So I talked to him. He's like, yeah, if she's willing to pay, she's allowed to come in. It was a real simple situation. No like legal anything. It was just a, under the table, you pay me, you can stay and live in my place. She's like, oh, that's great. That's exactly what I need. I'm going to move in. So she moves in. It's her, her two little kids. They live right next door. Everything's going great for the first week. She's cool, kind of. Albeit a little weird and a little off. We never do any research into who this girl is. None whatsoever, because we trust her. We we're all very trusting people. So about two weeks into her living there, I go out one night, spend the night at a buddy's house. Uh, I come back in the morning, because my landlord texted me and said, hey, I want to let you know uh, the back door is unlocked because our new neighbor said that her toilet is broken, so she needs to come in the back door and use ours. I was like, oh, that's a little sketch, but hey, you know, we're trusting people. I'm gonna let that one slide. So I come home, it's around 10 o'clock in the morning on a wonderful blistery Thursday in Florida. Also, don't go there. It's a terrible place to live. So I'm there and I'm chilling in my room and I'm gonna go write, cause you know, obviously I spent so much time writing these jokes that you all enjoy, clearly. So I'm like, oh, you know what, today I will not use my laptop. I take it out of my backpack. I sit it on the chair in my room, in the front half of the house. She's only been using the back half of the house. That's it. That's all that was in the agreement. I leave with my notebook. I go to Starbucks. It's like a five minute drive up the road. Cause like the one thing that's sure in America is you are never more than five minutes away from a Starbucks. That's what keeps us safe. And that's what keeps it simple. So I leave for the Starbucks and I come back, right? Because I forgot a pen. You know, you kind of need a pen to use a notebook. You can't just use blood all the time. It just gets a little weird. So I come back to grab a pen. I go to the chair where I know I set my laptop, and it is gone, completely gone. Now you can't mistake whose laptop it is because there's a giant sticker on it that says Nathaniel from The Price is Right. I was proud of that sticker because I got on The Price is Right. She didn't earn it, and her name was not Nathaniel. So it just wouldn't work, okay? Laptop's gone. I go into like haywire mode. I'm mad because she stole the one thing that actually makes me money in life. Because as we all know, comedy just ain't kicking it right now. So I'm doing the best I can to keep cool. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to accuse her right away. Maybe she's borrowing it without the password to get in. But hey, you know, details. So I go next door. I knock on it. Nice, calm, cool, and collected. Hey, Lindsay, how's it going? That's her real name. Doesn't matter if you know it or not because we're gonna find out she's crazy. <clears throat> but I'm gonna get ahead of myself and I wanna do that. Hey, Lindsay, just wondering, like when you came over to use the bathroom, did you go anywhere else in the house? She's like, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't go anywhere else in the house, just the back using the bathroom. I'm like, ah, oh, cool, yeah, because uh, I can't seem to find my laptop. <laughs> I looked everywhere in my room, don't know where it is. She's like, oh, that sucks. I'm like, yeah, don't know where it is. She says, well, did you check the sofa? I said, ah, oh, the sofa. You mean the one in the front room of the house? She's like, yeah, that one, because there's a laptop sitting there. It's pretty gray. I don't think it works, though, but it's sitting there in the front room on the sofa. So you mean the front room of the house that you didn't go into because you were in the backside? Yeah, yeah, I just remember it from like a couple weeks ago. And then it dawned on me, I'm missing my camera, too. My $1,400 camera has been gone. I didn't think anything of it, because a couple weeks earlier, she comes home, she's all hot, and she's like, hey, I need a bottle of water. I'm like, it's weird 
that you're asking to come into my house for a bottle of water. She's like, yeah, I just need to sit down while you go get a bottle of water. I'm like, okay, cool. She sits down, I go grab a bottle of water, I come back and she's inspecting my camera. I thought maybe she was just interested in joining the film industry at the time, but uh, apparently that wasn't it. So she has my camera, she has my laptop, and that's all I know that she's taken at this point, and I know she has it. So quickly, I call my landlord, he says, call the cops, I call the cops. But I didn't make it seem as if I was white over the phone, so they took their time in responding. <laughs> Where was that? Oh, okay, yeah. So at this point, I'm not. I'm done waiting for the cops. I'm gonna do some detective work myself. I knock on the door. I said, "Hey, Lindsay, I was told by the landlord that I should come in and check the bathroom to make sure everything's solid." She's like, "Yeah, come on inside." So I walk in and I'm like, "Hmm, I'm gonna check the bathroom." Oh, oh, not that one. And I'm like, "You only have one bathroom in this house. What do you mean, not that bathroom?" She's like, "Oh, there's just it's a mess. There's stuff everywhere." And everything in me was like, in that room is my laptop. Like, everything that I need in my life is within that bathroom. And I didn't go in, because right as I was about to open the door, there was a knock on the door, and the cops had showed up. It's like, it'd be a little sketch if I'm rummaging around in her house trying to get something with the cops there. So I leave out the back door, I go to the front, I explain to the cops everything that's happening. He leaves. When he leaves, I'm inside washing my hands after going to the bathroom because that's the natural hygienic thing to do. And as I come outside, I see my landlord yelling at her in her car. So apparently she had run out the house with a backpack, right? You know those little backpacks you stick diapers in, sometimes green and pink, hot green and pink, not big enough to hold a laptop of this size. So the laptop is the shape of the backpack. Like you cannot mistake the fact that it is my laptop within her bag. There's no denying it. So I'm like, hey, can I just have my laptop back? We'll call it all fair, and you can give me my camera back. She's like, this isn't a laptop. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean it's not a laptop? It's diapers for my kids. My kids that are at school, and they're diapers for them. I'm like, diapers? Your kids are 8 and 11. What do they need diapers for? She's like, I'm sorry, did I say diapers? That was a slip of the tongue. I meant school books, because they read books in school. I'm like, no, oh my gosh, you don't understand. They're, they're, that is my laptop. We're yelling back and forth, and she's with her cousin, and her cousin's like, look, I don't want any part of this. He hops out the car, or she, he kicks her out the car, drives off, right? So now she runs back inside with my laptop. Success, though, she wasn't able to pawn it, okay? So we fast forward a little bit more time, and I'm up all night. Like, uh, the way the bathroom is positioned in my house, there's a window that looks directly to where she is, but to get there, you gotta, like, stand up on the bathtub and hold yourself up and look out the window. So for a solid two hours, I'm just standing like this, staring out the window, hoping for any movement whatsoever, right? And then finally I get some. A car pulls up, I see her go out with the backpack, she puts the backpack in the car, the car drives away. So now I know my laptop's gone. I've lost my laptop, which is $2,000. I lost my camera, $1,400, because that includes the lens, and I don't know if she's taking anything else. At this point, I'm, I'm done, like that's everything. So my landlord concocts a plan. He goes over to her house and says, I will not kick you out if you just confess and bring all the stuff back before Nick finds out. So like, like I'm not in on it, whatever. So he says all this, and she's like, okay, cool. She confesses to everything through a Facebook message. Like, all the evidence of everything that she did is in the Facebook message. She handed off the laptop to her parents, which makes them an accomplice to the crime, so that they would not, or so that she would not get caught and have to go back to jail. So all of this happens. Craziness, like, legitimately 100% real. Like, yes, back to jail. I said that. So uh, we finally get my stuff back after three days of this ordeal of her keeping everything. I had to buy my camera back from a pawn shop for $350. Not me, because if my landlord sees this, he's going to say, uh-uh, that was my money. So my landlord bought my camera back for me from a pawn shop. And she got off scot-free, like completely clean. So we look it up. She's been arrested three times prior for multiple different felonies. We never thought to look any of this up. Never thought to. She had been arrested for uh, driving under the influence, for assault and battery on a police officer, and uh, I forget what the other one was. So all this crazy stuff goes down. A couple weeks later, she realizes she can't pay rent, so my landlord starts to force her out. She finds that she has nowhere to live, so she makes one of my landlords call the police on her and get her Baker Act in. Those of you who don't know what a Baker Act is, 
Uh, in Florida, it's a law where if you are too crazy to be put in prison or you might cause harm to yourself, you get Baker Acted and you get put into a mental asylum for three weeks, which gives you time to stay there for free and then to assess you. So she got Baker Acted, kicked out, moved out, completely gone, out of my life. The last thing that I had ever heard of her was before I moved from Florida down here, and uh, the police came up to our door and they said, hi, do you know where Lindsay is? We said, no. She said, okay, because she's been on the missing persons list for three weeks. So uh, that was the entire story of that. I was trying to see if I could find a punchline by taking a pause. There wasn't one. The next story I want to tell you guys happened recently. Um, this story, I, I wanted a job. I needed a job in Chicago. And I was doing the best I could to make sure I could find a job in Chicago. Finally, I found one. Dove Pictures. I got one. It's great. Okay? I applied for it, got it that night. Fantastic. They then sent me an email saying, Hello, Mr. Fleming, we're glad to have you here. We need you to work on a documentary for us in Iowa shooting veterans to be able to put this together, get money for a grant, right? Real simple. I'm like, cool. Like, this is cool. I can do this. This is right up my alley. I work in this stuff. So uh, they said, the next thing we need you to do before we give you the rest of the information is we're going to send you a check for $2,255. We're going to need you to deposit that in your bank account, and we need you to take $200 as your payment, and then send us $2,000 for us to be able to book the travel for you, send it to a travel agent. I'm like, okay, sounds a little fishy, but I guess, you know, I'll just go with this one. Sounds like something this business is going to do. So they send me a check, like a legitimate cashier's check for $2,255. Something doesn't smell right. They want me to deposit it in my account, take it out, and give it to a random account at Wells Fargo. And you know, I'm like, hmm, this is weird. My parents are like, hey, this might be a Nigerian scam. Be careful. They could be getting you. I'm like, I don't know if it is or isn't, but you know what? I've only been texting this dude. I haven't heard his voice. Let me just give him a phone call and see what's going down. So I give him a phone call. He picks up. Hey, Timothy, how's it going? Hello, brother. How are you? Hmm. I'm doing better now, Timothy. You said you were in L.A.? Yes, I am. I am in L.A. right now directing a picture, a short film, something very simple. But what I need you to do is take the check, I need you to deposit it, and I need you to place $2,000 in the account that I have placed for you. Okay, Timothy, that sounds great. I just missed the bank. Bummer. Uh, I just was wondering, what, what short film are you directing? Oh, yes, like I told you, I am co-directing a short film. Um, it is tight. You know, it is of no concern to you. You do not need to worry yourself with these details. I just need you to go to the bank, take $2,000, stick it in the bank account so we can move forward with the travel. Cool. Great, Timothy. So how long have you been working in the film industry? I have, uh, I have worked a long time in the film. I've done a lot, many things. What I'm telling you to do, you need to deposit the check, you need to take $2,000 and you need to send it to me tomorrow. I'm like, okay, that works, Timothy. I just need something from you. Yes, what do you need? Well, <laughs> crazy thing, it's really weird. I, I just started working for the FBI and they're weird about the whole time off policy thing. So I was wondering if I could send you some documents for you to sign and send that to me to be able to take the time off to go shoot the documentary with you guys. Oh, that would be no problem whatsoever. You just, you send to us whatever you need, as long as with that, you send us the $2,000 to be able to deposit in the bank account for the travel agent. Oh, that's great, Timothy. So you're sure, like you're positive that this is completely okay, me working for the FBI? I'm sorry, what did you say? I said I work for the FBI. Click, hangs up the phone immediately. <laughs> Sends me a text right after that says, what was that? Was I being interrogated? Question mark, question mark. With an emoji of like the little, the little hands, like the smiley face with the hands. And that was how all communication ended. Because at this point he's being investigated by the FBI. Which leads me to tell you guys that no longer are the Nigerians promising you millions of dollars because they're a king in their country. They're promising you jobs, which is like really, really enticing to people who graduated college have a mountain of debt and nothing to show for it. <laughs> All right, so uh, speaking of living in Florida, this is my last story of the night, and then I'm moving on uh, because the other stories have been so filled with raucous laughter. Um, I, uh, I was very poor, if you couldn't tell, living in Florida. It was a terrible time, um, but I, I realized that there's a problem with the way that we treat homeless people. 
Like, if there's a homeless person on the side, we don't give them money. We don't give them anything. We just are like, ah, get away from me. You're dirty. Go take a shower. You know, rude things like that, which was hurtful because I was literally one step away from being homeless. And I thought, that's weird. But when it comes to ducks, people will go out and buy a $5 loaf of bread and just throw it willy-nilly at the creatures. Like, what's the difference between a duck and a homeless person? I get it, ducks don't ask for money, but still, a homeless person is a little bit more valuable than a duck. Which then led me, like, if I ever ran out of money and couldn't eat, I'm just gonna go to a lake where ducks are. Because I can overpower any duck for a loaf of bread. As a matter of fact, if I can overpower a duck for bread, I can overpower a duck, period, and eat the duck, you know? So I just solved my own hunger crisis. And I'm like, well, wait, that's really selfish. I'm the only one here who's benefiting. How about this? How about we take all homeless people and we dress them up like ducks? <laughs> if we dress all homeless people up like ducks, they're going to get free loaves of bread whenever they want. They just dress up like a duck and go down to a lake. Free bread all the time. The only problem will be that if I'm ever homeless, they're going to have to be careful. Because like I said, I can overpower a duck and eat it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great night. <laughs>